Okay, this is a how-to to, to uh, convert a Atherin uh, powered snowplow DC to DCC. Now there are tabs and I've released them using toothpicks to get this off. And then what that gives me then is what I'm going to have to work with in here. Like I said, it's DCC or it's DC. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the screw underneath here that has the post as you can see right here so this screw has to come out and that'll release the tender from the locomotive make it a lot easier for me to get my work so I'm going to release that and then we'll come okay, back now to that it. that's done I just put the nut back on the screw you gotta be very careful that you don't lose this because it has a, a spring and a washer so make very be very careful that you don't uh, lose this thing now the next thing to do is to remove this board that controls the DC C I'm sorry the DC so you can go in different directions I would imagine so slick sucker in it Okie dokies. You won't need that screw, but this lets this come out, then you can go ahead and separate it from all of these things. And this screw here needs to come out as well, releasing that cable. Da -da -da -da. Should have set the brakes on this thing, huh? Okay, now that's out. And I'm going to stop now and remove these four, which get me my wires back. This wire will actually go away. And we'll come back. Okay, so um, what I have here is a decoder. And I've put a nine pin plug in there. I cut the wires short as you can see because I don't need a lot of wires in this thing. I've got the light strip. I'm going to use nine lights in this one. This is a 12 volt. I've already put the wires on it. I've got a 1k resistor on it that I think you can see wherever the camera is. Uh, if it'll focus on it, which I don't guess it wants to, so too small. Anyway, <clears throat> it goes inside of the cab and it goes in so it's the wires are at the back end. And as you can see, it's going to go up there quite a ways. It'll light up everything. But I don't want it to be seen, but all you do is you uh, remove the The backing we'll go from this end here maybe now it just didn't want to stick at all on the rock island so I don't know that it's going to stick on this one any better But we'll find out as we put this way in the back. Back right to there. And try and get it started like so. Then we're just going to bring this over and up. Up like so. And then just start pressing it down. And we'll see if it sticks or it doesn't stick. And up here, I'm going to try and crimp it and then stick it way up inside the cab. So I don't want to see it. And like I say, it didn't stick in the Rock Island, and I don't know that it's going to stick in this guy either. It's got these little tabs from uh, the steps. 
I suppose I could grind those down a little bit, but I don't want to. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put down some canopy glue inside of this, right down the, the center, and let it sit for just a little bit until it gets a little bit sticky. This stuff just gums up as, as soon as I do it, so we'll see what happens here. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I hope so. Okay. Now we'll start the strip again. It's going to be messy. I betcha. But what the heck, huh? I've got it right down the center. And I'll just keep pressing this down until it decides to stay, which might take a while. But I'll let it sit. As you can see it wants to just slide around. I think you can see it anyway. So like I say, we'll just keep messing with it, trying to keep it down. It doesn't want to stay down, but eventually it did stay down on the Rock Island. So. I'm going to let it sit for a minute, then I'll come back and stomp it some more. Now the speaker is going to go right here. And it just fits in there perfectly. Just back a little bit from the... And again, we're going to use canopy glue. It does take a lot, because it'll, it'll spread out as it goes in. Okay, that's enough. There's no pressure on it or anything, so it won't go anywhere. And we just push it down and let it ooze, get it back from the motor a little bit. That's good. Now we got this guy, and this piece of wire will go on once this nut goes back on, once we put the thing back together with the tender. So, with this thing, I'm not going to need, I need the red wire, I need the orange wire, I need the blue wire, I do not need the white, I do not need the green, I do not need the yellow, but I do need the black, and I need the orange. Wherever and ever it went. Orange. Why do I not see an orange wire? Well, I've already got it. I've got the red, the orange, the blue, and the black. So I don't need... I'm going to go back and check see what the green wire goes to. I may need the green wire. So you go to the book. You can open it up and see what that green wire actually goes to, if anything. Okay, so the green... Green, 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 green. The green wire is AC1. And the... Brown wire is AC2. So either of those, AC1 and AC2, use F3 for it. So you can use either one of those two wires, the green or the brown. And this brown really seems to be purple. So I'm just going to use the green. So I'm going to cut these wires off short at different lengths. Oops. i got to get my gray wire up here. don't want to lose that. Okay. So I know I don't need these two. The yellow and the white. I'm cutting them off at different lengths so I don't have to worry about them affecting each other. I could pull this out and just take the wires out. Now 
Now the green wire is probably the one I'll use. Uh, AC1. But there's no hurry to just determine that. So now the speaker wires are here. They just come up. I know I'm getting out of camera. I apologize for that. I haven't done this for a while, so. I use this soldering paste. I've used it a long time and I had to buy some new because I hadn't done this for a while so my paste had kind of turned to clay. Just wasn't working out very well at all. So I put just a little bit of this hockey puck on it. Okay. And then that's tinned and that's tinned. And it wants to look ugly. So we'll kind of fix it. It looks better. Okay, so now we know we're going to use the black. And we're going to use the red, we're going to use the orange, and we're going to use the gray. Let's move this back in range here. Okay. So I'm going to take a second here to put some, go ahead and, and strip these and tin them, and then we'll come back. Okay, I got this back out, uh, and I just keep pushing it down as that canopy glue sets. And I put quite a bit of pressure to it. It just has to stay there. If it's not, I don't want it to fall down where it can be seen through the windows, obviously. So then we'll look at it again in a few minutes. So first, now I've got the, I started putting the uh, heat shrink on some of these wires that are going to go to another fairly fine wire. They will work. A couple of wires, kind of like off the motors, they're pretty thick, so I use a little bit, little heavier uh, heat shrink for it. So the only other wire I need to do is the green wire. I haven't decided how short or how long I want it to be yet. So that'll take a minute or two. So they're on. And it's the same thing for these guys back here for the speaker wires. They'll reach right across to the speakers. Short trip. So you know what? I don't need shrink. So this is going to go, it's going to sit on this little nibbin right here. We'll zoom in a little bit again. Just for get this down even further. So this little nibbin right here, it'll sit on that and then it'll balance over on the other side as I put canopy glue against that and against the edge and a little bit on the speaker. So we'll do that now. Okay, I just kind of lay this on its side and and again I need that to kind of firm up a little bit. Or I've got to put something underneath it that's that thickness. And I don't know that I have anything that thick. 
So. Maybe that'll work. Let's find out. That doesn't look too bad, huh? Get it over to the speaker. Yeah, that's going to work fine. As you can see, so that's going to take a while to set. Go back to this one more time and push that all down. See how that works out. Be deep, be deep, be deep. So what I know is the red wire goes to here this one and the black wire will come off this back where this screw came up earlier the orange wire goes to the right side of the motor that's not a rule by the way but it typically works and I really need to let this set before I mess with it. So I'm going to kind of cue off for a while, I think, and let this stuff set up so I don't mess it up. I was disappointed he couldn't meet you. Pretty much of a task for the old gentleman to get around these days. <laughs> you see, he's confined to a wheelchair. He's oh, confined to a wheelchair, I tell you. Legs are paralyzed. Result of jungle fever. Just came on him lately. How oh, Yes, it's a shame, all right. Okay, so I'm at this point now, I've got everything soldered up. I think you can see, maybe you can see the speakers are hooked up from there. This is the orange lead, the gray lead. The red lead goes to here, which feeds off this side here. The black lead will go to this nut down here, but it's right now I just have it temporarily hooked to the track. So let's see what happens if we try and start it. nothing so I get to start figuring out why that's the case probably should have tested this decoder before I did all this so back to the drawing board okay since I don't have the back the tender hooked up yet which powers the left side rail what I've done here is use some alligator clips to uh, get it going while well, I'm trying to put the tinder back on I don't know but I just did so with the MRC decoder we're going to hit 8 got a lot of different horns we can change the horn sound if we don't like it and I don't like it but I'll change it later three that's three on the thing turns on the lights and when they first come on they're on a different setting I, re I redid them so and it's uh, 118 CV 118 and then 3 and that gives you the steady then it has strobe and oh, all kinds of blinking lights pretty pretty neat decoder really so now you don't want to get too carried away 
So what I'm going to do is go to one. And I'm not getting any motor for whatever reason. So we'll go to two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the motor's not working. How about that? So, it's not warm, nothing's spinning. I've got motors, so in case that's not going to work, I will change it out. Well, that's a disappointment. So, back to the drawing board. Hit eight twice, and she should shut down. Someday. Maybe it's three times. Well, the third one did it. Then I hit it again and started it back up, so. Yep, three shuts her down. Three times on F8. So why my motor ain't running, I don't know. I will check my uh, solder first, and then if that doesn't, if that's not it, I'll figure out something else. Okay, what do you say we try it again? I've got everything hooked up. Now what I have in here, I don't know why, but I got residual blinking. I want to turn this off for just a second so you can see it a little bit. Don't know why, but that's what it wants to do. Let's bring it back here a little bit more. Set it straight up. But, if I hit three, in this case it's going to turn everything on. If I hit three again, it'll turn the lights on. You can see they're very bright. Now I've turned the start voltage way up on this thing. Now I don't know if it's just uh, getting the motor broken in or what, but it doesn't really matter. You can turn this up until you feel like you got the speed you want. I wouldn't run it wide open. It's not designed for that. I'm sure it'll do it, but I just wouldn't do it. But these belts, like right, these little rubber belts have been sitting in here so long that they've kind of taken shape. So let's see, I'm going to go up to speed one, nothing, two, nothing, three, nothing, four, nothing. Now we're getting a little bit of start. It's in reverse. It's in forward, actually. Which means it's going counterwise. And it's going clockwise. There's 12. There's 15. I think you can see, maybe, I'll go ahead and zoom it in a little bit. See so if you can see this belt kind of doing its thing here. Probably really can't that easily, but it's doing it. So anyway, it's running. I'm going to button it up. And we'll get a view of it from the side as it works, and you can see the uh, propeller on this sucker moving. And you see with this tender on it. And I'm going to just run it for a while, just to let this motor kind of get broken in. So we'll turn the light off. I know it's not. Probably need to go through this and figure out how to shut that thing up. And as it breaks in, I'm going to get some of these things if I can. Get that motor just to come all down. So I don't see it. So anyway, we're up and running. And this is it for now. I will hit eight three times. One, two, three. And 
shut it up and then I will put this all back together after I shrink all the heat shrink to make sure it stays in place and button her back up and all I'm going to have to do is take that screw back out, take the nut off bring the tender back in and then put the screw back up through it with the spring in the washer and then very carefully put that nut back on and then get on the bottom and tighten it up nothing, nothing unusual about that and uh, as I do that I'll kind of try and keep these wires all down so uh, they're not seen but there's these windows aren't really look through anyway they you can see the light but they're kind of so small they're distorted so not too concerned about it Isn't this fun? Okay, I finally got this rascal working. So you punch eight to get her started. Three, you can turn on the inside lights. I don't know how well you can see them. Let's turn up the upper light. There you go. Turn them off. And turn them on. And then to get the engine working, as if I hit the wrong button there, sorry about that. I zoomed right in on that rascal. I noticed on the Rock Island and on this one, you gotta really give it almost. all the way to the top but the thing is these things run at full speed when the rotor is going we'll shut her down for a second here Switch this over because we're going to go the other direction now. Of course, this isn't propelled, it's uh, pushed. Union Pacific uses two diesel locomotives. And they also have a F7B unit to provide a lot of electrical power. So I'm going to list this on eBay. It's the 10th of August 2020. It is used. I had to do quite a bit of work to get it cleaned up and, and wired right. Cleaned the wheels and I had to clean the track. It is very sensitive to that. I thought about adding more weight and then decided, nah. Not going to do it. So anyway, there she is. She's in excellent condition, really. And like I say, I did a lot of cleaning. I oiled the motor and the bearings, or bushings, I guess we'll call them. And uh, like I say, it takes uh, a lot of power. I've got the start power set up quite a bit, up to 45 I think. Uh, I'm not sure why it takes so much for that motor to turn, but it was the same on the other one, so I guess it's common to these two units. So anyway, I hope it fills your needs. Uh, like I said, I'm going to stick it on eBay, and I wish you the best. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, subscribe please.